When God spoke to me about the ministry that I was gonna have, I thought for sure I would fall out of bed the next morning and be traveling around the world. <laughs> you know, yea, I say unto you, that can sound really exciting. <laughs> oh yes, in, in due time, at the appointed time, what is that? Nobody knows what that is. It's like until God's good and ready. And so for six years, I taught a home Bible study that had 20, 25 people, and maybe if we got blessed, 30. And I did that for five years, not five days, not five weeks, not five months, five years, did not get paid for it, had desperate financial needs. People would come and enjoy the party and leave. And I'd have to clean the mess up. And in the midst of all that, God was teaching me or trying to teach me a little something about attitude and servanthood. Come on now. And uh, <clears throat> I remember just a couple of things that, that happened, and I'm just gonna try to be really practical with you. I was just learning about faith back then, and boy, we just all thought we were gonna believe God and get everything we wanted because we were part of the Word and faith movement and, you know, whatever you believe for, you'll get. And so I didn't... I didn't have the slightest idea what to really use my faith for. And so I was always trying to use it for things, stuff that I wanted or promotion that I wanted or I believed God for Dave to change and that didn't work. And <clears throat> I believed God to change my kids and that didn't work. And you know, we're, all, we're always believing for something. It never occurred to me I asked God to change me because of course I didn't think I had anything wrong with me. I was like, you know, the perfect specimen of everything, you know, and you, we really don't know anything until we know that we don't know anything. And then we have learned the first thing that might help us towards someday learning something, amen? So, just a couple of stories. I wanna kinda of show you how you'll stay at a place and God will test you in that place, and then when you finally pass those tests, then you'll move up here and then you'll go through tests on that level, and then when you finally pass those tests. Now, sometimes we're not real smart about this test passing thing, and so we just get to take them over and over and over and over and over. Come on. So. Of all the most, I'm almost embarrassed to tell you this, but I was believing God big time for a fur coat. Because <laughs> I went to one of those big word and faith churches, and I'm telling you what, we would have camp meetings, and all the speakers would come in, and all the wives of the reverend and the this and that and something else, they had on their fur coat. And man, I just thought if you had a fur coat, you were the in with the in crowd. You were it. And so I was believing for a fur coat. And uh, one day my neighbor came over. She was a, a Christian girl that went to my church, lived right next door to me and attended my Bible study. And I loved her with the love of the Lord, but I didn't like her. <laughs> How many of you know about that? Well, I love you with the love of the Lord. Whatever that is, I don't know what that is, but I've decided I can do without a lot of it. And... Um, so I really just didn't like her. She just downright annoyed me. And uh, the minute that I opened the door, I mean, I could tell without her saying a word that she was extremely excited. And I'm already thinking, Ugh, you know. And she had this big box in her hand and she said, you are not gonna believe what God gave me. You are not going to believe it. And so she came in and she opened this box and it was my fur coat. <laughs> my fur coat. And I tell you what, I honestly thought the angel brought that to the wrong house. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, I thought there is no way that God gave her that coat. <laughs> because she's not nearly as spiritual as I am. <laughs> well, I did what I was supposed to do. Oh, praise the Lord. for you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And I'm inside, now inside, come on, because what's important is inside. Come on, there's a message here. 
inside. I mean, God don't care about the I love you with the love of the Lord. What he cares about is, do I really love you? Am I going to be there for you when you have a need? And he didn't care about my, my old praise the Lord, you know. What was coming out of me was jealousy and great rage and greed and judgment. I thought, she doesn't give nearly as much money to the church as I do. I fast and pray all the time. She eats all the time. Do not tell me, do not even begin to tell me that God gave you that coat. So a couple more years go by and I get to take a test again. Now I'm still at my house, you know, with my 20 people. Still got my big vision, see? You're gonna stay right where you're at. Until <laughs> you learn the lesson that God wants you to learn on this level. So then my pastor came by one day, and he was 26, I was 36. We both thought we knew everything, neither one of us knew anything. <laughs> and uh, he was believing for a big ministry, I'm believing for a big ministry, and you know, we're all believing. And um, he'd been off to some big camp meeting in Texas, and and while he was there, they gave him a $2,500 honorarium. And he was so excited. And a couple of people had said they wanted to partner with him in his ministry, and he was so excited. So he came to my house to tell me the good news. <laughs> How many of you know sometimes you just don't want to hear somebody's testimony? <laughs> Now, I'm, I'm, we're just talking real stuff here, okay? All right. And so, but I've had a couple of years since the fur coat, and so we've moved along a little bit. And uh, so he's telling me, oh, I can't believe it. They gave me this honorarium, and a couple of people wanted to partner with me. It was so awesome. It was amazing. And then all of a sudden, it was like he kind of realized what he, <clears throat> how this might be hitting me. And he said, oh. Is it okay that I'm telling you this? And I said, oh yeah, praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Well, I wasn't as unhappy as I was two years ago, but I still wasn't totally thrilled. And so when he left, I went and threw myself across my daughter's bed, I remember. <clears throat> and I cried, and I cried, and I cried, and I cried, and I cried. And I said to God, I am going to tithe and give offerings from now until the time Jesus comes back if I never see one penny from it. And after that day, our finances started to turn around and change. You see, it's not, it's not just about giving. It's about the attitude that we live with in the rest of our lives. And you see, sometimes God's going to run some tests by you. He's going to run some people by you <clears throat> that aren't as spiritual as you, as you, that are getting what you want. <laughs> eh, come on now. <laughs> and you're going to have to learn to be happy for them, and the only way you can be happy for them <clears throat> is if you trust God so much that you absolutely do not want anything that he doesn't want you to have. Not now, not ever. Amen? You know, I don't pray anymore for God to give me what I want. I pray that God will give me what I can handle. And I pray, God, please don't give me anything that's going to make me think I'm more important than what I am. Please don't give me anything that's going to ever take me away from you. And please don't get, and if I try to get anything that's not your will, <clears throat> slam the door in my face. Amen. Now, 
The Bible says that although he was a son, talking about Jesus in Hebrews 5, 8, and 9, he learned active special obedience through what he suffered. Now listen to this, verse 9. And his completed experience, Hebrews 5, 8, and 9, making him perfectly equipped, he became the author and the source of eternal salvation. Wow. Wow. In other words, you might have a calling, but you need to be equipped with some experience. <laughs> a lot of people have a gift that can take them somewhere, but they don't have enough character to keep them there once they get there. And so, I want to say something to you, and I want you to remember it. Don't be in such a hurry about getting what you want and going where you're going. Don't, don't be in such a hurry. Take time to learn the things you need to learn so when you get where you're going, you'll be able to stay there and not just get somewhere and then lose that place. 